Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can draw a very cute cartoon bird in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to create. We're going to draw this cartoon style bird in Illustrator. And one of the nice things I like about cartooning like this in Illustrator is that it's really easy to give the bird a different look because wherever you happen to put his eyeballs, is going to give him a different appearance. And so you can fiddle around with the eyes a little bit and get the bird doing exactly what you want him to do. Now this is a really simple Illustrator project, but you're going to learn some really handy techniques along the way. The starting point for our bird is just a brand new document. So I've just gone and created a image that is a thousand by a thousand points in size. We're going to use the pen tool to create our bird and I have no fill here but I do have a stroke and I've set my stroke weight to about seven points. So I'm going to draw out his beak. So I'm going to click here, here, here and here and that's going to create the shape for his beak. Now the rest of his head is a bit more like an ellipse so I'm going to target the ellipse tool and I'm going to drag out an ellipse and I'm going to hold the space bar if I want to move it into a slightly different position and then let go of the space bar still while I'm drawing out this ellipse. And I'm just going to place this ellipse pretty much where if I joined this together I'd end up with the shape that I want for his head. If I need to reshape this I'm going to click on the selection tool and then just come in here and shape it and move it into position until I've got it roughly where I want it to be. So this bit is going to be the bird's head. I'm going to add some pen shapes for the body. So I'm going to click here. And I'm just going to start drawing in the pen shapes for the body. I'm going to drag up here and I'm going to drag all the way down here to start creating the body shape. Now the body has a tail on it which I can draw here by just clicking with the pen tool to grab this triangle sort of shape rather than a more organic shape. And here we're going to come round here and bend up. So I can just click here and just drag and that's creating that sort of rounded shape. And I'm going to click again back on the finishing point and this is giving me the rough look of my bird. Now I'm going to come back in with the direct selection tool and start just tweaking on these lines. I want to make sure that I've got the shape of the body here. The bits that I actually care about are the right shape. Now I seem to have a bit of a twist in this line here which I don't want so I'm going to make sure that I bring these handles out so that it sweeps into his tail and so that I don't get a loop here. I'm just going to make his tail a little bit smaller and a slightly different shape. Sort of happy with that for his tail. I think his neck and head is too big here so I'm just going to alter these handles and perhaps bring this anchor point in a little differently. I actually think that he was more this shape to start off with. And here I can just continue to work on this shape until I get it looking the way I want it to look. If I select over multiple anchor points at once I can move all these pieces independently of the rest of the shape. So here if I select over these points I can start dragging those and the rest of the shape doesn't move. Again here this anchor point I think needs to come a bit closer to his head. Now that I've got the basic pieces for the bird, we can use the Shape Builder tool to isolate the pieces that we want and the pieces that we don't want and join everything together. So I'm going to click the Selection tool, drag over the bird so that all these shapes are selected. I'm going to select the Shape Builder tool. And now as I go over each of these pieces, you'll see that they get a shading. And so I can just click and drag to join the pieces together that I want to be joined into a shape. And that's this piece for his face because that's later going to be a black stroke and a white fill. And it's this piece here and his tail are all going to be another shape. So there are basically the two shapes that I want for my bird. 
So I'm just going to click away from here and here are the two pieces I want, the body and the beak. I'm going to start with the beak and I'm going to fill it with a white colour. So it has a stroke and a fill. And we'll see that it's here in the layers palette and it's got everything else on top of it. It might be easier if we just put it on top of everything else and you can see that that's got rid of a few extra little bits that we had. Let's see what these extra bits are. Well, there's a piece here that we probably don't need, so I can just turn it off and see if we really need it. There seems to be a piece here that we probably don't need either. And let's check this piece, and we probably don't want it either. So that would leave this bit, which is the bird's body. So I'm targeting it, and let's go and fill it with black, because the bird is a black outline and a black fill. So that's looking pretty good and I've pretty much determined that these extra little pieces here I didn't want anyway. So I'm going to select that extra piece, make it visible, select it and just get rid of it in the trash can. Sometimes you might find that you end up with some extra little pieces when you use the Shape Builder tool and that's fine because you can just determine whether you need them or not and get rid of them. So now we have the bird's body and we have the bird's beak. He needs an eye and that is an ellipse. Well, it's a circle really. It doesn't have a fill but it does have a stroke. So I'm just going to click and drag and I'm going to hold the shift key as I do that so that I constrain my ellipse to a proper circle and just let go. And now I can press the selection tool or press the letter V to get it and then move the eye into position. Now he has an eyeball as well and again that's an ellipse but this time it's a filled shape and it doesn't have a stroke on it. So I'm just going to click and drag and hold the shift key as I do to create his eyeball and then use the selection tool by pressing the letter V to move his eyeball into position and this is where you can get different effects with your character because his eye can be pointing wherever you want it to go. And so I'm going to have mine looking down a little bit, but maybe move the eyeball in a bit. Now I'm running out of room a bit here at the bottom of my illustration for my feet and for the ground. So I'm just going to select over all of these shapes so that they're all selected and just move my bird up a little bit. And now we're going to give him some feet and his feet are very, very simple. We're probably just going to do this using line segments. So I'm going to start with a foot that's going in a forward direction. So I'm just going to click and drag to create that. It needs to be a black stroke and it needs to be about a seven point line because that will be consistent with the other lines that I've used for the bird and that's going to give it a sense of cohesion. If I use different stroke weights all the time it's not going to look quite so good. And now let's draw a line for the first of his toes and then the second. These are going to be sort of pointing upwards and then he's going to have the back claw and that's going to be this shape here. So let's just move out of the way and I've actually drawn these really, really well so I'm pretty happy with them. I'm just going to group them together so that they're going to travel together in the same relationship if I need to move them. So I'm going to choose Object Group. It's much easier to do that because then I can just pick his foot up and position it and I don't have to worry about keeping all the pieces together because they're actually going to stay together. Now he's going to be resting on this foot so again let's go and get the line segment tool and let's draw out a line for his back leg. And this again has two toes at the front. Draw one, draw a second one making sure they intersect nicely and then a back toe. And again just clicking away with the selection tool just to make sure that everything looks fine and I've drawn this again really well. If I hadn't I would just select each shape in turn and just reshape it. But again I'm going to group this because that's going to make life a little bit easier later on. It also means that I can now make him walk and do all sorts of things by just working with his legs but I'm not going to lose the shape of the legs that I've created. 
Now he had a green ground underneath him and there's a cloud in the sky. So let's go and create our green ground. I'm just going to use the pen tool for this because it's a nice little organic way of drawing with the pen tool. I've added a new layer and I'm just going to drag the layer underneath the bird layer so that the ground is going to go behind. And I'm just going to start drawing with the pen tool and use this as a little practice exercise to play with the pen tool and create a sort of little organic round shape for the grass. Once I've done that, I'm just going to click away and have a look and see what I think of it. If it needs some alteration, I'm going to come in with the direct selection tool, pick up these anchor points and I can alter each anchor point individually if I want to, reshaping the path at that point or moving the path to get something a little bit different. If I'm happy with my shape, I'm going to reselect it with the selection tool and we just need to fill it. So I'm going to target the fill color and let's go and get a green fill for it. I'm going to give him a sort of different green to the one I used last time because I think this one's a nicer green. And finally, we need some clouds in the sky. So again, a new layer and I'm going to place this well behind the bird in case the clouds go behind his head. They're going to be in the correct layering because we wouldn't want the clouds in front of his head. This is going to be done just using the ellipse tool. I'm not going to need a fill right now, so I'm going to turn off my fill and I'm just going to draw out my circles. Now, the easiest way to draw a cloud is to do four circles, a big one, a not quite so big one, a little one and a very little one. And now we're going to position these. So we're going to take the second biggest one and move it to the other side of the big one. And then we're going to take the next to biggest one after that and place it here. And then finally, we're going to take the little one and just pop it in here. And this gives us a really nice little starter cloud shape. I'm going to select over all of these shapes and I want to join them all together. I could do it with the shape builder, but there's an easier tool for something like this and that's the pathfinder. You get to it by choosing Window and then Pathfinder. And for the Pathfinder, I'm just going to click Unite because that's going to make all of these into a single shape. Now I want my cloud to have a solid base. So I'm just going to go here and grab the rounded rectangle and I'm going to draw here to create the solid base for my cloud. And I'm just going to perhaps rotate this a little bit by selecting the selection tool. I'm just going to rotate this shape a little bit because I want to position it so it's going to sort of close up this cloud. It's going to give it a nice solid base. Once I've done that, I'm going to select over all of these objects and again go to this Unite. And that's giving me a pretty good cloud shape. And if I wanted to, I could fill my cloud with white so that later on, if I was to add a blue background to this object or to this entire artboard, then everything would look perfect and there wouldn't be like a blue hole in the middle of the cloud. Let's test that. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to move it to the very bottom of the layer stack and I'm going to use this for my sky. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. Let's just make sure I can see all of my artboard and I'm just going to create a rectangle that is the size of the artboard. I don't want it to have a stroke and I do want it to have a fill. So I'm going to pick a very pale blue color for the sky. And it looks like I've just failed with my cloud as it doesn't appear to have happened the way I wanted it to. So let's go and reselect the path here and it looks like that white fill didn't stick. So there is my white filled cloud. Let's just click away from this and there is our cartoon bird in Illustrator. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.